بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين We start our halaqa for this evening inshallah and we continue with tafsir al-imam al-sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala again for those who want to read Quran and they don't want to be disturbed by the sound of the speakers, I think they can go in the front uh, prayer hall and inshallah they won't be disturbed there. Jazakumullah <coughs> khairan. So we reach Surat Iqra, which is again the first five verses that were revealed from the Quran at the beginning of Surat Iqra. Qal al-Imam al-Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala تفسير سورة إقرأ وهي مكية أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق إقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم كلا إن الإنسان لا يطغى الرآه استغنى إن إلى ربك الرجعى أرأيت الذي ينهى عبدا إذا صلى أرأيت إن كان على الهدى أو أمر بالتقوى أرأيت إن كذب وتولى ألم يعلم بأن الله يرى كلا لئن لم ينتهي لنسفعا بالناصية ناصية كاذبة خاطئة فليدع نادية سندع الزبانية كلا لا تطعه واسجد واقترب هذه السورة أول السور القرآنية نزولا على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فإنها نزلت عليه في مبادئ النبوة إذ كان لا يدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان فجاءه جبريل عليه الصلاة والسلام بالرسالة وأمره أن يقرأ فامتنع وقال ما أنا بقارئ فلم يزل به حتى قرأ فأنزل الله عليه اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق عموم الخلق ثم خص الإنسان وذكر ابتداء خلقه من علق فالذي خلق الإنسان واعتنى بتدبيره لا بد أن يدبره بالأمر والنهي وذلك بإرسال الرسول الرسول إليهم وإنزال الكتب عليهم ولهذا ذكر بعد الأمر بالقراءة خلقه للإنسان. The English translation. This surah was the first surah of the Quran to be revealed to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It was revealed to him at the beginning of his prophethood, when he did not know anything about the book or about faith. Jibril alaihi salam came to him with the message and commanded him to recite, but he refused, saying, I am not a reciter. But Jibreel kept urging him until he recited. Then Allah revealed to him the words, recite, commencing with the name of your Lord, who created all creation. Then he singled out man and then he singles out man and mentions the beginning of his creation from a clinging clot. The one who created man and cared for him must also care for him by issuing commands and prohibitions, which he did by sending the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam to them and sending down the books to them. ثُمَّ قَالْ اِقْرَأْ وَرَبُّكَ الْأَكْرَمْ اَيْ كَثِيرُ الصِّفَاتِ وَاسِعُهَا كثير الكرم والإحسان واسع الجود الذي من كرمه أن علم بالقلم علم الإنسان علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم فإنه تعالى أخرجه من بطن أمه لا يعلم شيئا وجعل له السمع والبصر والفؤاد ويسر له أسباب العلم فعلمه القرآن وعلمه الحكمة وعلمه بالقلم الذي به تحفظ العلوم وتضبط الحقوق وتكون رسلا للناس تنوب مناب خطابهم فلله الحمد والمنة الذي أنعم على عباده بهذه النعم التي لا التي لا يقد لا يقدرون على التي لا يقدرون لها على جزاء ولا شكور 
ثم من عليهم بالغنى وسعة الرزق ولكن الإنسان لجهله وظلمه إذا رأى نفسه غنيا طغى وبغى وتجبر عن الهدى ونسي أن إلى أن إلى ربك الرجعة ولم يخف الجزاء بل ربما وصلت به الحال أن أن يترك الهدى بنفسه ويدعو غيره إلى تركه فينهى عن الصلاة التي هي أفضل أعمال الإيمان يقول الله تعالى يقول الله لهذا المتمرد العاتي أرأيته Hence, after the command to recite, he mentions his creation of man. Then he says, recite, for your Lord is the most generous. That is, he is possessed of the most sublime attributes and is very generous and kind. Part of his kindness is that he taught the use of the pen. Who taught the use of the pen taught man what he knew not. For he brought him forth from his mother's womb not knowing anything. And he gave him hearing, sight, and intellect, and made available to him the means of acquiring knowledge. So he taught him the Qur'an, and he taught him wisdom, and he taught him the use of the pen through which knowledge is preserved, and rights and duties are regulated, and messages are exchanged between people so that they do not have to speak directly to one another. All praise be to Allah who has bestowed these blessings upon his slaves, for which they cannot give sufficient thanks. Moreover, he has blessed them with independence of of means and abundant provision. But because of man's ignorance and wrongdoing, when he thinks that he is independent of means, he transgresses and behaves arrogantly, turning away from true guidance. He forgets that he will return to his Lord and he does not fear punishment. Perhaps he may even go so far as to reject guidance himself and call others to reject it and tell them not to pray, which is the best act of faith. Allah says to this stubborn and rebellious one, have you, O man, we continue with the Arabic, أَرَأَيْتَ أَيُّهَا النَّاهِ لِلْعَبْدِ إِذَا صَلَّى إِنْ كَانَ الْعَبْدُ الْمُصَلِّ عَلَى الْهُدَى العلم بالحق والعمل به أو أمر غيره بالتقوى فهل يحسن أن ينهى من هذا فهل يحسن أن ينهى من هذا وصفه أليس نهيه من أعظم المحادة لله والمحاربة للحق فإن النهي لا يتوجه إلا لمن هو في نفسه على غير الهدى أو كان يأمر غيره بخلاف التقوى so Have you, O man, who tells someone not to pray, considered how about if he, namely the slave of Allah who is praying, is indeed following true guidance by knowing the truth and acting upon it and enjoining righteousness upon others? Is it appropriate to try to stop someone who is like this? Is it not the case that trying to stop him is one of the worst forms of of opposition towards Allah and towards the truth? Such a thing cannot be done except by someone who himself is drifting away from guidance or he tells others to do things that are contrary to piety. أَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ كَذَّبَ النَّاهِ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَلَّى عَنِ الْأَمْرِ أَمَا يَخَافُ اللَّهَ وَيَخْشَى عِقَابَهُ أَلَمْ يَعْلَمْ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ يَرَى مَا يَعْمَلُ وَيَفْعَلْ How about if the one who tells someone not to pray disbelieves and turns away from the truth? Does he not fear Allah and his punishment? Does he not realize that Allah sees all? Doesn't he realize that Allah sees all that he does? ثُمَّ تَوَعَدَهُ إِنْ اسْتَمَرَّ عَلَى حَالِهِ فَقَالْ كَلَّا لَإِنْ لَمْ يَنْتَهِ عَمَّا يَقُولُ وَيَفْعَلْ لَنَسْفَعًا بِالنَّاصِيَةِ ثم توعده إن استمر على حاله فقال كلا لإن لم ينتهي عما يقول ويفعل لنسفعا بالناصية أي لنأخذن بناصيته أخذا عنيفا 
وهي حقيقة بذلك فإنها ناصية كاذبة خاطئة أي كاذبة في قولها خاطئة في فعلها Then Allah warns him if he persists in his ways nay if he does not desist and give up what he is saying and doing we will surely drag him by his forelock that is we will surely seize him violently by his forelock and he deserves that for it is a lying sinful forelock that is he is lying and in what he says and sinning in what he does فليدعو هذا الذي حق عليه العقاب ناديه اي اهل مجلسه واصحابه ومن حوله ليعينوه على ما نزل به سندعو الزبانية أي خزنة جهنم لأخذه وعقوبته فلينظر أي الفريقين أقوى وأقدر فهذه حالة الناهي وما توعد به من العقوبة وأما حالة المنهي فأمره الله ألا يصغي إلى هذا الناهي ولا ينقاد لنهيه فقال كلا لا تطعه أي فإنه لا يأمر إلا بما فيه خسارة الدارين واسجد لربك واقترب منه في السجود وغيره من أنواع الطاعات والقروبات فإنها كلها تدني من رضاه وتقرب منه وهذا عام لكل ناه عن الخير ومنهي عنه وإن كانت نازلة في شأن أبي جهل حين نهى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن الصلاة وعبث به وآذاه تمت ولله الحمد so let him, namely this person who deserves the, that punishment, call his associates, that is, his companions and friends, and the people around him, to help him deal with that ha what has befallen him. We will call the angels of punishment, that is, the keepers of hell, to seize him and punish him. Then let him see which of the two groups is stronger and more capable, that is the situation of the one who tells someone not to pray, and this is the punishment of which he is warned. As for the one who is told not to pray, Allah commands him not to listen to this person who tells him not to pray and to pay no attention to him, as he says, Nay, pay no heed to him, for he is not enjoining anything but that which leads to loss in this world and the hereafter. Prostrate in prayer to your Lord and draw near to Allah in prostration and in other acts of worship for they all bring one closer to attaining his pleasure and bring one nearer to him. This is general in meaning and applies to everyone who tells one not to do acts of worship even though it was originally revealed concerning Abu Jahl when he told the Messenger of Allah وسلم, not to pray and try to disturb him and warn him and harm him. Jazakallah khair. Okay, so Surat Iqra, the first five verses were the first verses ever revealed from this blessed book, the Quran. And the story is well known that the Prophet ﷺ was in cave Hira, and the Prophet ﷺ kana yatahannath, yatahannath. And tahannath in the Arabic language has many meanings. Uh, it could mean purification. Purification. And it could mean prayer. And it could mean worship in general. So what was the Prophet ﷺ doing? The Messenger ﷺ was contemplating. Not meditation as today. So people try to seek, say that meditation is Islamic. Or they take it from Buddhism, from Hinduism, from Taoism and then from modern psychology. They have meditation, right? As a practice of relaxation. And then you have some Muslims saying, oh, you see, uh, it's in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. Before he received revelation, he used to do meditation. Well, the, you know, the word meditation, contemplation, reflection, are like sort of conflated in the English, in the usage of the English language, right? But the word meditation today has stood out for a practice for a practice that is religious in Eastern religions and that has become a common practice today among the New Age spirituality, right? So it's a religious practice. But, you know, that's not what... And it's about silencing the mind for them. Just stop your thoughts and sit still. Don't do anything. Observe. That's not what the Prophet ﷺ used to do. Actually, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah 
and his student Ibn Qayyim, they actually addressed this because this was a known practice from the East, from the old days, it was known. Uh, and some mystics who ascribed themselves to Islam, some of the Sufi sects who ascribed themselves to Islam, they invented, they took that and they said there is Islamic meditation. But the Prophet ﷺ wasn't doing that. The Prophet ﷺ was reflecting on life, what it means. He was engaging with the bigger questions of life, right? So that's what he was doing. He was searching for the truth. He, was, he, was, he wasn't just sitting in silence. He was contemplating. What is this world is about? What is this life about? What, is li you know, what am I doing here? What am I supposed to do? And these are the questions of the fitrah. He is engaging with the quest of the fitrah. But the Prophet ﷺ did not receive, had not received revelation up until that moment. So he didn't receive revelation. He didn't know. This is why Allah says, You didn't know what the book was, revelation. You didn't know what faith was in matters of the unseen. So Jibreel came to the Prophet ﷺ, and it was in the month of Ramadan. And some scholars say it was in Laylatul Qadr. Uh, Jibreel came to the Prophet ﷺ and obviously said to him, Iqra, read. And the Prophet ﷺ said, I don't know how to read. I'm not a reciter. I don't read. So Jibreel held him very tight and let him loose. He said, Iqra, three times. And the Prophet ﷺ was petrified. Jibreel finally gave him the, revealed to him these first five verses. Iqra, read. And that's a sign that, you know, the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with knowledge, with education, not with tradition, not with culture, not with assumptions, not with whims, desires, thoughts. No, it starts with reading, iqra, read, in the name of your Lord who created. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. So you have, it, this is a very intense message. First, read. And look, try to put the word in the context. Like it looks out of context. Read, like in this very like, scary situation, the Prophet is completely shaken. And he says, read, like what does reading have to do with anything? Right? Iqra bismi, in the name of your Lord, Rabbik. So there is Lord now. Lord in the Arabic language, Rabb means creator. It means someone who takes care of you. He answers all of your needs. He has given you everything. There's another word for that in the Arabic language, waliyun ni'mah. You know, the provider and the owner of everything you have. Okay, so that's, that's all automatic, understood by the Arabs. When you said, Rabb, iqra bismi rabbik, it's understood. So it's a very profound word. So it takes you to, into a completely different world. So the Prophet ﷺ was looking for what is the point behind life? What are, what are we doing here? Did the Prophet ﷺ know Allah? Let's get you engaged. Did the Prophet ﷺ know Allah before revelation? Did he know Allah? Huh? What do you mean by know Allah? Did he know Allah? Did he know Allah existed? Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth. I would say that he knew there was a force that existed. Huh? I would say that he knew there was a force that existed. A force? That existed. Okay. So did he know? No, did he know Allah and that Allah is perfect, complete? He's above the heavens, he's the creator of the heavens and the earth, and his name is Allah. Did he know that? Yes. He knew the God of Yes. The Arabs knew Allah. Their name was Abdullah. <laughs> his father's name was Abdullah. So they knew who Allah was. They knew, and they knew that these idols were not Allah, but they took them as what? As mediaries with Allah. So he knew Allah. He knew Allah was the creator of the heavens and the earth. He knew. It's not like he was searching, like there was no God and is there a God or not? No. Is there a God or not? This is an answered question. When you're born, you know it. When you're born, you know it. So this is why atheism is an anomaly, is a departure from human nature, complete departure from human, is a dumbing down of humanity. But they built around it, they scaffolded it with a lot of sophistication and a lot of terms and a lot of philosophy stuff like that. But it's a futile idea. It has, this is why in Surah Ibrahim, Allah talks about the messengers who were sent, that they say to their people, Afillahi shak. Like, is, like, doubt, like they were shocked. You're doubting Allah? Now it's about worshipping Allah, that's what the message is about. But 
to get to the point where is there Allah? Like, are you really doubting Allah? So for them, it's like, it's unthinkable. Right? So the Prophet ﷺ knew Allah, but Rabbuk now. There's a connection. Rabbuk, your Lord, the one who takes care of you. Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. He created, and he created here, created everything. This is an open clause here. خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ عَلَقٍ He created man from a hanging clot. اِقْرَأْ وَرَبُّكَ الْأَكْرَمِ Your Lord now is the most generous, the most noble, the most honorable. الَّذِي عَلَّمَ بِالْقَلَمْ Who taught with the pen. Now the pen here, it means write. It means writing and it means the pen as well. Somebody might say, now, now we type, right? We, don't, we use keyboards. But that's still the pen. That's all writing. The whole concept of writing, coding knowledge into language, into letters, into words, into sentences, that's all called al qalam, right? Allama al insana ma lam yalam. He taught man that which he did not know. And we are born, we don't know anything. We don't know anything. Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'alamuna shay'an. Surah al Nahl. Allah brought you forth from the wombs of your mothers knowing nothing. You don't know anything. And he provided you with hearing, sight, and hearts. We know with our hearts. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches about... Now these are the first verses that were revealed. The rest of it was revealed later on. And most likely years later. And it speaks or was sent on the occasion of uh, Abu Jahl resisting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam trying to stop him from prayer. Many times Abu Jahl said, لَإِنْ رَأَيْتُ مُحَمَّدًا يَسْجُدُ عِنْدَ الْكَعْبَ لَأَطْعَنَّ عَلَىٰ عُنُقِهِ أو لَأَطْعَنَّ عُنُقَهُ If I see Muhammad praying by the Kaaba, I shall put my feet, my foot on his, on his back, on his head, on the back of his neck. And he actually tried. But the angels, angels pushed him away. And he said, Wallahi law akhtarab tu qayda un mula. The Prophet said, Wallahi law akhtarab qayda un mula. Let a khatta fatul malaika tu rodwan odwa. Had he came to me just by an inch, the angels would have taken him piece by piece, taken him apart. So that's Abu Jahl. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about him, but that's a general concept. And this is something that is known in Islam that's very important. There is something called a principle in Usul al-Fiqh. It's called al-ibratu bi'umum al-lafzi la bi-khusus al-sabab. Meaning, the meaning of the verse signals a general rule and is not limited to the specific case here. Many rulings of fiqh are like this. For example, in hajj, when a person is in state of ihram and they say, the person needs to shave before the time for shaving. So there was a, a companion at the time of the Prophet ﷺ who was with him and he had a lot of issues in his head. He had lice and he had problems and a lot of itching. So he needed to shave. So he approached the Prophet ﷺ and Allah revealed the verse that a person who has harm or illness or an issue with his head, they can shave, right? But they should slaughter an animal, uh, a sheep. Uh, instead of that. So when this was revealed, the man asked the Prophet he said, The Prophet said, The man said, is it only for me or is it for all the Muslims? The Prophet said, for all the Muslims. Everyone in this situation, it applies to them. So this really talks about a human condition. Allah says, Man transgresses with arrogance, aggression against others. So man has this in him. Every human being has this in him. Anyone who thinks he's free from that, then he doesn't know himself or she doesn't know herself. People have this potential and it's latent in them. And when the opp opportunity you know, presents itself, this, express this expresses itself out, this tendency expresses itself out. This is why Power, any sort of power is extremely dangerous. Extremely dangerous. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man transgresses 
when he finds himself, when he sees himself that he is rich, that he possesses, that he has authority, he has wealth, he has power. Man tends to abuse that. And by the way, this is like, this is even known. There has been some experiments. I think it's called the prison experiment. Was it in the 60s? Um, they actually brought people to just act out a scenario that there are prisoners uh, and there are uh, prison wardens and guards. And they put them in a prison. And I think it's, uh, it's, it's an Italian an American, Italian, American uh, uh, psychologist who did that from the University of California, um, Zimbardo, Professor Zimbardo. They had to stop the experiment in the middle. So they put them for an extended period of time for, I don't know, a couple of weeks in prison. Some people took the uh, role of uh, prison guards and some were prisoners. And they were told to act as if it was a real situation. And you know what? And they filmed them and they observed them. The prison guards abused in a sadistic way and they inflicted real harm. This is an experiment. This is an act. Inflicted real harm on the prisoners. To the point that it became extremely dangerous and unethical. And at that time the ethics for... You know, scientific experiments were not, were not that strong, were very loose. But they had to put an end to this. It, look it up, it's very famous. That tells you humans, it's very dangerous to give man power. Simple. This is why Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu said, تفقه قبل أن تسودوا You know, learn, educate yourself. And تفقه fiqh at their time was not only knowledge, theoretical knowledge, it was proper, you know, treatment of the self, knowledge and you implement it and you purify your heart and you grow with it. Tarbiya. Right? So educate yourself and cultivate yourself before you assume positions of leadership or authority or power. And this applies, by the way, as well to parents. If a parent is not cultivated, it's easy to get frustrated with a child and really, you know, cause harm to them. Okay, كلا إن لسان لا يطغى أراه استغنى إن إلى ربك الرجعة والله what a beautiful verse this is إن إلى ربك الرجعة the return is back to your Lord this for a believer is a very sweet verse for a disbeliever it's a it's a tremendous threat إن إلى ربك الرجعة you shall your return will be to Allah you know, all this life that you live, all the details that you do and go and enjoy and uh, the dreams that you have, and all of that is going to come to an end and all of that is going to, you know, take you back to Allah. The return is to your Lord. That's, this, is what, this is the gist of life. The return of, is to your Lord. So everyone is going to be held accountable. Everyone is going to meet Allah eventually. Uh, Did you see the person... Yanha, who prohibits someone else from praying, again Abu Jahl acting against the Prophet sallallahu uh, alaihi wasallam. He's saying, you know, but the Prophet sallallahu is upon the truth, and he's doing something good, and you are preventing him. So this is a person Yanha, you know, like Nahi an al Munkar, right? Yanha from Nahi an al Munkar, Amr Maruf Nahi an al Munkar. So Abu Jahl had authority and he had wealth, and he. He felt this kind of transgression towards the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu He felt entitled to it. That's a form of power, a form of uh, transgression, entitlement, which is very common today. And it's taught to kids as well. It's taught, this disease is taught to kids under the name of human rights. So, so Abu Jahl felt entitled that he could prevent Prophet sallallahu from praying and from adv- calling people to Islam. So he tried to prevent the Prophet Allah says, what, a, what if he was upon the truth? What if what he was doing was actually good? You prevent what's good? Do you see the absurdity of that? Right. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Doesn't he know that Allah sees and watches everything? And again, this is referring to the state of Ihsan, that every person should strive to live their life being aware that Allah is watching them. 
but Allah knows them. And He's the one who's going to hold them accountable. Allah says that, then Allah gives a warning that if He did not, does not, because again, Abu Jahl uh, took power in His people, in His supporters, in His uh, team. And Allah says, you know, who's your team compared to the angels who are the guards of the hellfire? The guard, alayha malaikatun ghiladun shidat. Allah described them as very rough and violent. Ghiladun shidat. So again, the surah uh, is actually a reminder that we can take from that is that in our times, there's a lot of prohibition of good. People, you know, become Muslim, people practice their religion, people pray. Just the other day, you know, the, the guy who was praying in the Ottawa uh, via train station, you know, the clip that went viral, and then this, uh, this officer or this guy from the security guy from the train station says, you can't pray here, right? He approached him after he's done with the prayer. Again, that's shaitan provoking him. He's impatient to see someone worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's a lot of prohibition and sometimes it's not so direct. Sometimes it's calling, you know, whoever like practices or they, they are extremists, things like that. There are extremists, yes, but again, to use it with everyone who practices their religion. And that is the point, by the way, behind it anyways. It was invented originally for that anyways. The whole concept of extremism and uh, terrorism and all that stuff. Or sometimes, oh, you're backward, right? That's tradition, that's old school, you know, embrace modernity, civilization, right? Nakedness, and everything, all this stuff. Allah must time. We have time for more surah. Watini uh, was Today, what's it, 40? Is the Adhan 40? The Adhan. Yeah, then 46? No. For, 42. Ah, 42. Taib, I think we can read. Yeah, we can read, inshallah. Taib. Tafsiru. Qal Imam Sa'idi rahimahullah ta'ala. Tafsiru surat wa teen wa hiya makkiya. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa teen wa zaytoon wa turi sinin wa hadha al-baladi al-ameen. Laqad khalaqna al-insana fi ahsani taqweem. ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين التين هو التين المعروف وكذلك الزيتون أقسم بهاتين الشجرتين لكثرة منافع شجرهما وثمرهما ولأن سلطانهما في أرض الشام محل, محل نبوة عيسى بن مريم سورتين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم by the fig and the olive, Allah swears by these two well-known trees because of the many benefits of the trees and their fruits, and because they are prevalent in the land of Asham, which was the location of the prophethood of Isa ibn Maryam and by Mount Sinai, which was the location of the prophethood of Musa السلام, and by this secure city, Mecca, which was the location of the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by these holy places which he chose and from which he sent the best and noblest of his prophets. وَالْمُقْسَمُ عَلَيْهِ قَوْلُهُ لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ أي تام الخلق متناسب الأعضاء منتصب القامة لم يفقد مما يحتاج إليه ظاهرا أو باطنا شيئا ومع هذه النعم العظيمة التي ينبغي منه القيام بشكرها فأكثر الخلق منحرفون عن شكر المنعم مشتغلون باللهو واللعب قد رضوا لأنفسهم بأسافل الأمور وسفساف الأخلاق فردهم الله في أسفل سافلين أي أسفل النار موضع العصاة المتمردين على ربهم إلا من من الله عليه بالإيمان والعمل الصالح والأخلاق الفاضلة العالية فلهم أجر 
فلهم بذلك المنازل العالية أجر غير ممنون أي غير مقطوع بل لذات متوافرة وأفراح متواترة ونعم متكاثرة في أبد لا يزول ونعيم لا يحول أكلهم أكل أكلها دائم وظلها What is attested to is the words Verily we have created man in the best of conditions That is we create him in the best of ways With limbs in proportion and in upright stance and he is not lacking in anything that he needs either inwardly or outwardly. Yet despite these great blessings of which thanks should be given, most people fail to give thanks to the bestower of these blessings, for they are distracted by amusement and play, and are content with the most trivial and insignificant of matters. So Allah will reduce them to the lowest of the low, namely the lowest part of hell, which is a place for sinners who rebel against their Lord, except for those whom Allah blesses with faith, righteous deeds, and a sublime good attitude. There, theirs will be a never-ending reward. That is, they will attain high status thereby, an unceasing reward. Rather, they will have a constantly available pleasures, joys coming one after another, and blessings in abundance, in eternal bliss that will never end. Its food is perpetual, and so is its shade. فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أي أي شيء يكذبك أيها الإنسان بيوم الجزاء على الأعمال وقد رأيت من آيات الله الكثيرة ما به يحصل لك اليقين ومن نعمه ما يوجب عليك أن لا تكفر بشيء مما أخبرك به أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين فهل تقتضي حكمته أن يترك الخلق سدى لا يؤمرون ولا ينهون ولا يثابون ولا يعاقبون أم الذي خلق الإنسان أطوارا بعد أطوار وأوصل إليهم من النعم والخير والبر ما لا يحصونه ورباهم التربية الحسنة لا بد أن يعيدهم إلى دار هي مستقرهم وغايتهم التي إليها يقصدون ونحوها يؤمون تمت ولله الحمد then after this, what makes you, O man, deny the judgment? That is, what makes you, O man, deny the day of requital for deeds? When you have seen, when you have seen many of the signs of Allah that should make you certain, and you have seen the blessings of Allah that should make you not disbelieve in anything that He has told you, is not Allah the wisest of the wise? Does Allah's wisdom dictate that He should leave humankind without purpose? with no commands or prohibitions never to be rewarded or punished? Or will the one who created them in stages and bestowed upon them innumerable blessings and favors and took good care of them inevitably bring them back to their final and ultimate abode to which they are headed and there they will end up? Okay, so this surah, what it, what it does, uh, there's a few... Uh, subtle indications there, but we're not going to address them necessarily. They are mentioned here in the in the tafsir that Atin wa Zaytun referred to Asham, Turi Sinin is Sinai, Wahad al Balad al Amin Matkan. These are the areas where prophets were. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam was in all these areas. Musa alayhi salam was in Turi Sina, right? Uh, majority of the prophets were in Asham. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was in Al Balad Al Amin, Mecca. Right? These are the lands where revelation was sent and people were educated about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Then Allah says that we have created man in the best shape, complete in in that sense, in the sense of creation. Everything is right in place. There's no, uh, again, there's no extra pieces in a human being. There's no waste in a human being. Everything is fine, fine-tuned. Everything about the humans, and that's outward and inward. We're speaking about the physiology, but we can always also speak about the spiritually and the psychology, and all of that. Allah created man in the best shape that is suitable, best shape suitable for the purpose of this life. And such a grand and beautiful creation, in, you know the Bilad al-Sham in all these lands which are a sample of the earth and the creation of the human, the creation of the earth and the creation of the humans this beautiful intricacy, this wonderful system this balance you think all of that was figured out right but the purpose of humans was not figured out so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided man with creation 
but not with guidance and revelation? Allah gave humans life and did not tell them what to do with life? He's saying they go hand in hand. Allah gave man the, his creation and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave man the revelation. Creation and the revelation. Al-Khalqu wal-Amru. So Allah guided you even to your food. He's, he guided you to the food of your stomach. Do you think he's not going to guide you to the food of your heart? Allah showed you the purpose of your eyes, of your ears, of your hands, the purpose of the things around you, of the trees, of wood, of iron, and so on and so forth. You think your overall purpose was neglected? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, man debases himself, man brings himself down. How? By acting ungratefully to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in denial to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and choosing the path of disbelief. Allah created you at a level higher than all other animals that you see on the earth. You in, you in, humans insist to put themselves even below. Why? Because you are given a faculty that animals were not given, but you insist to live at the same level as them. So they have an advantage here because they were not given that level of consciousness, the qalam, they were not taught as you were taught. This is why Allah says, ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ السَّافِلِينَ Then we said man to the lowest levels, by their own actions, by their own deeds, their own choice. Right? So, this is what the surah is really about. Who is the exception to this kind of, you know, low level that humans end, end up in? Are the ones who stay true and loyal to the purpose of their creation. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to His revelation. As they accept His creation, they accept His revelation at the same time. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our hearts to the Qur'an and teach us more of it and let it illuminate our hearts and chests. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. It's time to make dua now, so make dua for yourself, your brothers, Muslim brothers and sisters around the world. Jazakumullah.